Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, gunfire rings out in an East San Antonio neighborhood. Up next, who police are now looking for in this apparent drive-by shooting. As airstrikes intensify between Israel and Hamas, a scramble to evacuate the war zone. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with what's being done to help civilians escape, including Americans. And trending right now on KZ.com this morning, six people are hospitalized after a teen crashes into a car into the corner of a home. San Antonio police say the teenage boy was driving southbound on Wahala Avenue when he struck a vehicle with five passengers inside. You can read how much it will cost to repair that damage the teen caused online right now. Outside with live cam. Folks, it's kind of chilly out there this morning, 43 degrees. And the question is, where is the, the floor this morning as far as how low temperatures will go? Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Monday. It is October 16th. We hope you had a fantastic weekend. Yeah, it was a fun weekend. The weather worked out. Um, happy Monday, by the way. Um, and it was interesting. Did you get to see the ring of fire with the eclipse? It was amazing. And what a primer for what's coming up in April. I know that's pretty cool to see. And I know Mike was super busy on Saturday morning watching all this. Out there, and by the way, hi to all the folks out in Uvalde. We were out there at the, uh, the festival that they were having. And boy, I tell you one thing, clouds cleared out perfectly. I got there and it was raining in the morning and then it was just, yeah, it was, it was remarkable. So, and this morning, all right, my forecast already about the window. I was going we were at 58 just a couple of hours ago and I thought, okay, it's going cool down. I went from 50, we're already at 51 right now. And look at that bottom number. Dew point is at 39, a little bit of a breeze out there. And so we'll continue to drop down. Then 78 for a high temperature, another just sensational day. If you're in the shadows today with a bit of a breeze, kind of like yesterday, it may be a little on the cool side because it's chilly when you step outside this morning. The aquifer went up four tenths of a foot. We do not have an allergen count. We're going to be getting that uh, tomorrow. That'll come back. Now, I want to point out, first of all, take a look at this picture. We take this full and that nice little bright. Oh, did it go behind? Nope. Just below that banner right. Right there. Where am I? Here I am. Ta-da. Ta-da, there I go. Uh, that is the planet Venus right there. I was walking outside this morning, and you can look up and see just a ton of stars up there, as well as planets, just because the air is so dry. Look at that, down to 42 degrees in comfort right now. 45 Bernie stage. Like I said, we're at 51 here in town. Bone dry air is in place. There's a little bit of a breeze in places, so guess what? There's a hint of a wind chill this morning. Now, the formulas don't come into play when you're above 50, but... Now that little bit of a breeze adds that kind of a nip to some of these cooler temperatures. So clear, chilly this morning and then sunny and just a fantastic day today. Upper 70s today, sorry, not to that and uh, colder even tomorrow morning. Been another fantastic day. However, the rest of the week, I mean, just to kind of put it in perspective, divide it in half, fall the first part of the week and yeah, another taste of summer. Let's enjoy this cool weather. Another taste of summer as we go in toward the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Anything? Good morning. Yeah, and good morning to all of our drivers out there. Happy Monday. Yeah, that eclipse was uh, pretty fun to watch over the weekend there. Taking a look outside, Transguy traffic cameras, I-37, Cesar Chavez. Traffic moving pretty good in our area. Not really anything major to, guy, to let you guys know about. There are a couple of minor things, though. Um, this just popped up on TxDOT's uh, incident page. This is a stalled vehicle. On the far northwest side, I-10, the eastbound lane, so traffic coming into town here at Bernie Stage Road. So keep this in mind if you're headed out there. I just saw the camera. We could get that up for you guys here in just a little bit, but uh, it doesn't appear to be causing any major traffic issues at the moment. And uh, south of downtown, we do have a stalled vehicle being reported there, 35 southbound at Cesar Chavez Boulevard. So again, Cesar Chavez um, is closed down. There's a lot of construction taking place there. Of course, this is on the highway right there, so this is something that we'll continue to monitor as we we make our way through our Monday morning. I-10 at Crossroads, traffic looking good there. 410 Babcock, things moving smooth there as well. You can see right there, kind of downtown area there. 37 at Houston, traffic moving smooth there as well. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for suspects who were in two different cars that started shooting at a man on the city's east side overnight. Happened just before midnight in the 600 block of Lincolnshire Drive, not far from Gates Elementary School. 
Now, police say the man was standing next to his car when people driving two dark colored vehicles started shooting at him from about five houses away. The man was hit in the stomach and leg by gunfire. He was taken to a hospital. So far, police have not released any suspect information. And San Antonio Crime Stoppers, they need your help finding a man they say robbed a gas station after threatening the cashier. Investigators say the man shoved, punched, and threatened a worker at the Shell gas station on Roosevelt Avenue last Friday. Police say he left the store with several items in a backpack without paying for them. If you see this man or know who he is, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. You can get up to $5,000 if your information leads to an arrest. TxDOT brought their newest pedestrian safety campaign to the Alamo City this weekend. TxDOT says pedestrian traffic deaths are up 30% in just the last five years. It hopes unveiling these walking billboards in cities across the Lone Star State will remind drivers to be aware of pedestrians crossing streets. Now to new details in the Israel-Hamas war. Here's a live look at Jerusalem this morning. As the fighting continues, a new agreement will allow civilians to safely escape through the Palestinian territory's southern border today. That deal comes as Americans scramble for seats on emergency flights out of the region. Israeli troops are also preparing for a potential ground incursion into Gaza. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, the death toll on both sides is rising to nearly 4,000 people, including more than two dozen U.S. citizens. Overnight in Gaza, more explosions. Israeli defense forces burnishing airstrikes around the clock, targeting the Islamist militant group Hamas. We will strike Hamas from the top through its institutions all the way down to the individuals that conducted the butchery of our babies. On the ground, the Israeli military calling up some 360,000 reservists with a ground incursion into Gaza appearing imminent. Inside the Palestinian territory, hospitals are struggling to wait the injured. Access to food, water and electricity cut off for days. Things are getting worse day by day, minute by minute, actually. The IDF now ordering more than one million people to evacuate northern Gaza, where Hamas's tunnel network allows them to hide out, hold hostages and smuggle weapons. President Biden on 60 Minutes calling Hamas cowards and defending Israel's response. Israel is going after a group of people who engage in barbarism that is as consequential as the Holocaust. But Biden also cautioning Israel against occupying Gaza, which Hamas has led since 2007. The U.S. now dispatching a second U.S. aircraft carrier to the region in an effort to contain the conflict. Meantime, Americans rushing to escape the war zone. We definitely feared for our lives, for our children. We had to hold them quiet. The U.S. State Department is racing to charter four flights a day from Israel in hopes of evacuating 800 U.S. citizens daily. The State Department also expecting Americans will be among those evacuating Gaza via the Rafah crossing into Egypt. It's only set to open for a limited time thanks to a deal brokered between the U.N., Egypt, Israel and the U.S. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And back here in the U.S. this morning, the Royal House Speaker still vacant. The Republican conference nominated Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio for speaker last week. However, numerous GOP sources say House Republicans will vote no for Jordan to become speaker of the House. A nominee has to secure the majority of the full House, which because of two vacancies is at 217. That means any Republican in this case, Jordan can only lose four GOP votes if the Democrats unanimously vote for minority leader Hakeem Jeffries. The House is expected to hold a vote for House Speaker tomorrow. A deadly train derailment completely shut down the interstate near Pueblo, Colorado this past weekend. The Colorado State Patrol says the wreck crushed a semi-truck. Authorities say the man driving that semi died. The derailment also caused a bridge to collapse and it spewed coal and left mangled train cars all across that highway. The National Transportation Safety Board is investigating. It's all Texas all the time when it comes to the American League Championship Series in Major League Baseball. Game one between the Astros and Rangers was last night. Justin Verlander got the start for the Strohs. There he is. He was solid through the first inning, but with a runner on second in the second inning. Noah Heim bloofed one to shallow right. That's plenty of room to bring Evan Carter home to get the scoring going. Then in the fifth, 
Leody Tavares crushes a ball over the wall in right field, and that's all the Rangers would need because the pitching would do the rest. The uh, Rangers win the game 2-0. Game 2 is this afternoon. Diamondbacks Phillies begin the NLCS tonight. All right, so much hype and excitement for Victor Wimbenyama that TNT actually broadcast a Spurs preseason game Friday night. <laughs> Wimby had many highlight reel finishes. He was 10 of 15 for 23 points, 23 minutes. He had four rebounds, four assists, three block shots. But the play that stole the show, a big dunk in the third quarter, his reach is jaw-dropping, unguardable. This is going to be a fun season to watch. Spurs won that game, by the way, 120-104. So the silver and black back at it tonight. Here's your matchup. Back-to-back preseason games at Frost Bank Center against the Houston Rockets. 7 o'clock starts. We won't see most of the Spurs' top guys in that game, though. Then Friday, San Antonio at Golden State at 9 p.m. tip. And don't forget the Cowboys play the Chargers tonight. On Monday night football. A busy Monday night. Yes, sir. Time now 510 and 52 degrees for now. Well, just ahead, a first look at a new Adobe feature that can change clothing designs at the push of a button. Plus, a big alert for parents whose kids play games online. Up next, how a man is accused of kidnapping an 11 year old girl he met uh, or found rather on the popular game Roblox. And let's look out there with live cam. Sure. Expect a nice cool morning. Yeah, we're at 52 degrees. I actually got to use my jacket this morning. Yay! We're gonna be checking in with Mike to see how long this cool weather is gonna stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 514. A 27-year-old man is accused of kidnapping an 11-year-old girl that he met on the popular online gaming platform Roblox. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First to Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Roblox Parenting Alert. This 27-year-old Delaware man is behind bars, accused of kidnapping an 11-year-old New Jersey girl. ABC News learned he allegedly conversed with her on popular children's online gaming platform, Roblox. Parents need to protect their kids online just as they would in the real world. Police say Darius Malutwich took the girl from Wayne, New Jersey to Bear, Delaware. Her parents reporting the 11-year-old missing, authorities finding her soon after. ABC reaching out to Roblox, asking them to confirm the two conversed on the platform. And Roblox providing this statement, saying they have reached out to law enforcement and are offering our help. And we work tirelessly to prevent grooming on our platform and have a team of thousands of moderators who enforce a strict set of community standards. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the tips parents need to keep your kids safe online. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 515, 52 degrees for now. For now. Apple is expected to announce new iPad models this week. Up next, the changes and new features that you will see in this latest line of products. Outside with TransGuide, still really early out there, but looks like we do have a stall vehicle 10 at Bernie Stage Road. I think that's what RJ said, but uh, we'll clear things up with him. Checking back in with him and then Mike's forecast to see how low things go this morning. Could we wind up in the 40s in the Alamo City? While serving in Iraq, our vehicle was hit and it was bad. Back home, I had to learn to live with the scars, both visible and invisible. Having someone on your side means everything. DAV helps veterans like LaToya get the benefits they've earned. They help more than a million veterans every year. My victory is overcoming my wounds so I can help other veterans. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. One roll of a lifetime, one sore throat. But she had enough. She took Mucinex Insta-Soothe sore throat lozenges. Show your sore throat who's boss. Mucinex Insta-Soothe works in seconds, lasts for hours. Parenting is 81% repeating yourself. The other 19% replenishing tasty snacks. Yell Play, real good, real yum, real smooth. 519. Welcome back. Hey, RJ, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, you know, I wanted to say over the weekend that it was good uh, that not too many people stopped down roads for the eclipse. Yeah. I was out yeah. kind of right after the fact, and uh, it seemed like everyone kind of behaved mm -hmm. themselves out there. Well, I even <laughs> Resisted saw the, the urge to look to stop in the middle of the road and look up. And I didn't see it till after, but I saw it. He was even on Transguide. Yeah. You know, do, please yes. don't be yes. that person. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if yeah. a lot of folks were deterred by some of the clouds that were hanging around here because it was really Maybe. iffy in the morning. Yeah. 
even here in town, and then things cleared out very nicely. So. A lot of people I talked to ex experienced what you did. They saw the clouds and were yeah. like, oh, we're not going to get to see it. But then just in yeah. time, yeah. we're able to really see cool. it. Yeah. Really cool stuff, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, taking a look at traffic today. Um, you know what, Mark, you just mentioned it before we went to break. We do still have this stalled vehicle out there on the far northwest side. This is uh, I-10, the eastbound lanes there at Bernie Stage Road. So you can see it's right before uh, you get to the Dominion there if you're coming into town from uh, the far northwest side. Um, uh, we just got a trans guy to pull this up for us. So you can see we have the stalled vehicle over here to the left-hand shoulder. It does not appear to be causing any major uh, delays or anything. That's actually the HOV lane, I believe so. Uh, not causing any, any major delays right now for the moment for our drivers out there, but something that hopefully TechStock can get out to and uh, maybe kind of take care of the situation before we do see any sort of uh, backup coming in that area. Of course, if you get closer, 1604 and I-10, things do tend to get a little bit uh, touch and go there with our traffic. Speaking of uh, kind of getting into town, looking at some inbound times right now, traffic moving along pretty smooth in our area right now. We mentioned, uh, of course, coming in from Bernie, 24 minutes right now. Casterville's right now at 33 minutes, but that tends to always kind of be a little bit of a, a little bit of a backup there for our drivers coming in from the far west side. But otherwise, guys, things looking pretty good. One more look at TransGuide traffic cameras. You can see, like, oh, this is an interesting shot there. 37 the Alamo Dome and uh, 35 at Salado Creek. Traffic moving along smooth there. As as well 281 loop 410 traffic looking good right now mike how are things looking outside it feels pretty good oh it's, yeah fantastic it is a great fall morning out there as of right now and uh well, as soon as we pop up the weather graphics it almost looks like uh, kind of the eclipse sort of <laughs> maybe kind of like that <laughs> anyway it was absolutely beautiful weather for it and yeah we did have a few clouds pardon me there we go. go. Okay, there's the eclipse, that beautiful ring of fire. And uh, yeah, Mother Nature just, but yeah, I mean, it was just it, almost an emotional experience watching that thing. That was so, so cool. There was nothing else going on out there. And like we said, this is just kind of a rehearsal for what is going to be happening in April with the total eclipse that goes through just about the same chunk of the area from the hill country into uh, San Antonio. Anyway, right now we are starting off with a lot of clear skies and you can see Venus if you can see it just above the banner right up there. A lot of stars, a lot of planets right now. 51 here in town, 41 in Kerrville, 53 in Lotus and 48 in Rio Medina. And then we do have a bit of a wind chill. Feels like 42 in Kerrville. We've got these winds, not much, uh, light uh, maybe five, six miles per hour or no wind. And so we do have good radiational cooling right now with the dry air, the clear skies and light to no wind. So I'm just altered my forecast or updated it. I should say 49 for low temperature this morning. And then we are going to warm up very quickly, already up to 68 at noon and 78 for a high temperature today. We are going to be on average five degrees below normal and it is going to be windy this afternoon, kind of like yesterday. It was fairly breezy. So if you're in the shade, it may be a little bit on the, the coolish side. You might want to grab a jacket. Dew point temperatures are down in the 30s right now, and they are going to be staying very, very dry throughout the day today as well as tomorrow. So that's going to allow things to be as cold or maybe even a little bit cooler tomorrow. Now we start to see a slight increase in the humidity. Here's the next front that moves on through here, but it's not. I mean, yes, it does knock the humidity out of here, but that's all that thing's really going to be doing. This is almost just the front in name only other than knocking out the humidity because it's not going to do much as far as temperatures are concerned. It's not going to do anything as far as temperatures are concerned. We're going to be down in the upper 40s again tomorrow, right around 80 Tuesday, Wednesday. So first half of the week feels like fall. Second half of the week is going to feel more like I hate to say it summer again. We are going to be in the upper 80s, low 90s going into the weekend. Yes, what humidity tries to return on early Thursday is going to get kind of pushed on out of here. But despite that front moving through, we're still going to be well up into, like I said, 90 degree range this weekend. Now, perhaps next week, midweek, there are some long range indications of another front, maybe a rain chance, but also bone dry this week. Yay, a little so. break. And I think yeah. while we were talking, we already lost another degree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's going to cool down quickly. I mean, yeah. this is perfect kind of, like I said, radiational cooling. It just temperatures just drop down until just after the sun comes up. So okay. we'll enjoy it while it lasts. Love it. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Mike. 524, 51 degrees. Okay, you're winning lotto numbers. Pick three, five, zero, zero, fireball five. Daily four, nine, four, one, nine, fireball six.
Your cash five number is nine, 11. Whoops, can we go back <laughs> one? You didn't memorize it? I didn't. <laughs>
causing any major delays at the moment. Taking a look at the rest of the city and things looking pretty good. I mentioned it's a little bit cool outside, so it might be a good time to go grab a nice little uh, cup of coffee or get your coffee going a little bit early. You can see a lot of green on our screen here, so that is good news. Might also maybe want to think about uh, going to the gas station, getting some uh, maybe filling up for the week as uh, take a look at uh, gas prices here according to AAA Texas. You can see that we're at 291 right now in Bear County. Now this is from last week when I checked it. This is about seven, eight cents lower on the average there for regular gas. 291 across the state. We're at 306. So if you're having to make any travel, maybe come back, uh, go back and forth up to Austin, back over here. 306 right now, and uh, this is looking good compared to the rest of the country at 360 when you look at your average gas price. So again, biggest thing we're following right now: eastbound lanes. I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. Everything else is looking good at the moment. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, someone in a car with a gun took <coughs> aim at a teenager, <coughs> then took off. Now San Antonio police are trying to track down that shooter. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. And Katrina, is there any update on the teen? Uh, from what police tell us, uh, he was stable. They say that he suffered two gunshot wounds. One was a grazing to his belly area and then also shot in the leg. Well, this happened uh, before midnight in a neighborhood not far from I-10 and Martin Luther King Drive. This is on the 600 block of Lincolnshire Drive. Police say the teen told him he was standing outside next to his car when two vehicles drove up. Two dark colored sedans drove up. Someone inside started spraying the area from about five houses down, uh, ultimately hitting that teenager. Again, he was rushed to a hospital by ambulance with those two gunshot wounds. Police did not not have any other information on the shooters other than two dark colored sedans and so they are starting it uh, from scratch trying to track down the shooters but so far no arrests reporting live near downtown Katrina Weber KSAT 12 news thank you Katrina here's a live look at the uh, Jerusalem this morning where the situation continues to be monitored and is having ramifications on Capitol Hill as well this morning where Republican Representative Jim Jordan is pushing to be the next Speaker of the House. He is hoping to succeed the recently ousted Kevin McCarthy, who lost the role in large part due to members of his own party. And now Jordan is also facing an uphill battle in his quest due to some in the House GOP. It's been 13 days since Representative Kevin McCarthy was voted out as Speaker of the House. And the role is still vacant. It's time to end the Republican Civil War so we can get back to doing the business of the American people. The Republican conference nominated Rep. Jim Jordan of Ohio for speaker last week. However, numerous GOP sources tell CNN dozens of House Republicans will vote no for Jordan. Nothing's impossible, uh, but it's it's going to be really, really difficult based on what I'm hearing. To become Speaker of the House, a nominee has to secure the majority of the full House, which because of two vacancies is 217 votes. That means any Republican, in this case Jordan, can only lose four GOP votes if the Democrats unanimously vote for Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries. We want to ensure that votes are taken on bills that have substantial Democratic support and substantial Republican support so that the extremists aren't able to dictate the agenda. The House is expected to hold a vote for House Speaker on Tuesday, according to an email CNN obtained from House Minority Whip Catherine Clark. We have a lot of people on the bench. Uh, I think Jim Jordan will be an excellent speaker. I think he'll be able to get to 217. If not, we have other leaders in the House. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A bipartisan U.S. Senate delegation was forced to take cover in Tel Aviv, Israel, amid rocket fire on Sunday. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer relayed the information on social media and said, quote, it shows you what Israelis have to go through every day. No word on any injuries from members of our delegation, which is being led by Schumer. His office says the trip is to show the United States' quote, unwavering support for Israel. Suzanne Summers, known for playing Chrissy on the television show Three's Company and New York's best-selling author, New York Times, excuse me, best-selling author has died. She was 76. Now, Summers had breast cancer for over 23 years and died on Sunday morning. That's according to her family in a statement provided by her longtime publicist. Her husband, Alan Hamill, her son, Bruce, and other immediate family were with her in Palm Springs, California. 
In July, Summers shared on Instagram that her breast cancer had returned. 539, 51 degrees. The world's largest privately owned construction, agriculture and industrial equipment manufacturing company is expanding to San Antonio. Up next, what that means for the city's economy and for potential new jobs in our area. Outside with live cam, when we came into work this morning, it was about 54 degrees. We're already down to 51. So you see where things are going here in the early morning hours of Monday. We'll talk to Mike and we'll check in with RJ coming up. And welcome back. It's 543. JCB, the world's largest privately owned construction, agricultural and industrial equipment manufacturing company, is expanding to San Antonio. The new facility is set to sit on 400 acres on the south side. Now, this move is expected to have a $30 billion impact for our economy over the next 10 years and bring in at least 1,500 jobs. Uh, Sarah Carbius Rush with Greater SATX joined Leading Essay this week and to explain the implications and other exciting news about our community. We talked about a lot. We talked about all of the big projects that are happening in and around San Antonio. Of course, we talked about JCB, the big announcement and what it means, not only for the South Side, but for all the opportunities around the Alamo City. Oh, Sarah joined us. Here's a bit of our conversation. So this is actually the uh, since the Toyota announcement, this is the next biggest announcement of a uh, single job creating investment within our within our community. So it is quite similar. Um, it's also similar in that it will be creating a new ecosystem of companies that are coming to service JCB, right? Toyota has created around it a, a large campus with many companies that are uh, working to help produce those vehicles every single day. And JCB's uh, manufacturing facility will be just exactly the same with a similar impact. We also talked about the airport, big expansion, those direct flights, what it means for local businesses and the certainty for San Antonio as opposed to the uncertainty when we talk about macroeconomic situations. And lastly, we obviously talked about the growing communities, New Braunfels and Bernie, and what recruitment strategies look like for those respective environments. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section at ksat.com. Of course, we have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. 545, and we're running about 51 degrees out there. Very nice, and looking out there with Transguide, Looking over at I-35 and Salado Creek, things look pretty good there. Also looking good at 281 and Loop 410. RJ Marcus is in the studio. We're going to check in with him in a little while. 548, 51 degrees. Let's check back with RJ. All right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going there? I hear you. I yeah, hear you okay, too. here yeah. we go. Hi, happy Monday, everybody. <laughs> uh, still following the stalled vehicle that we have there, I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. And again, doesn't appear to be causing any major delays. Traffic's still moving along pretty smooth there in that area. We have the HOV lane, um, obviously right there off to the left-hand side, but uh, hopefully Techstock can get out there. It's been about a good 30, 45 minutes that this uh, stalled vehicle has been out there on the far northwest side. Did want to bring this up. It appears that we have a bit of a traffic delay right now uh, construction um, I'm gonna say because this is gonna be this has kind of been an ongoing thing there for people in Vaughn Army this is the northbound lanes of 35 at Fisher Road so you can see the traffic kind of being held up there so you get to 35 and 410 so something that we're gonna keep in mind as a matter of fact I'm actually gonna go to the camera real quick because I asked them to put this uh, shot up <coughs> for us and you can see that we still do have some uh, some cones there on the uh, road there again 35 northbound at Fisher Road traffic is getting through there but again you can see that there is a uh, one lane there at least on the far right hand side for our drivers coming north that is uh, affecting traffic for the moment but right now guys other than this Things looking pretty good so far um, throughout the rest of the city. Maybe people getting a little bit of a late start. Maybe stayed up a little late, watched that uh, Rangers Astros game that ran a little bit late last night, or just uh, you know getting a little bit slower go this gotta, morning. Got to be another late one tonight. Yes. Cowboys yeah, Chargers Cowboys, that's on right. Monday yeah. Night Football. Yeah, actually, on case that's all. That's right. Playing out in uh, out in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. What's the Chargers yeah. record? I think they're two and two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the Cowboys had that got yeah. smacked by 49ers last week. Yeah. So. And the Niners yeah. lost last night. Yeah. So yeah. Eh, maybe you it'll, never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Maybe it'll and even out now. 
Well, the Lions. Right. Oh, you're Lions. Oh, oh yes. How I did we told forget? You, I told you you guys would beat the Bucks. Yeah, I mean, okay, I know. I'm just saying. You know, you're talking That's about right, you're won. Lions. All right. I'm sorry we didn't later, jump right so. on that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm wearing Lions blue. There you go. Thank you. Really? Honolulu <laughs> blue. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, Honolulu blue. Let's go away from the, the name of the, the color of blue. So, uh, this is what everybody was loving on Saturday. Of yeah. course, the annular eclipse, and everybody. Had their glasses. Aww. Our producer Colin wanted me to show this picture. Yes, of, uh, even their dog. pets so, need to yeah. be safe. Tongue <laughs> sticking out as well. Nothing to stick your tongue out at, but uh, <laughs> great picture. And the, the eclipse, it was just phenomenal. Clouds cleared out in a lot of places so folks could see it. So thank you very much for the KSAC Connect pictures, folks. And we are going to have a spectacular sunrise this morning. Got a lot of clear skies out there. Sun's not coming up until about, uh, well, for about another almost two hours, uh, right around 735, 740, right around there. Temperature 51 degrees in town, down to 40 right now in Kerrville. So, or excuse me, in Comfort. So, you know, some of the outlying areas are in the upper 30s right now in parts of the Hill Country. Then you factor in that little bit of a breeze that we have. Kerrville feels like 42 right now and it's not windy everywhere. We have mostly clear skies and so that's why we have perfect radiational cooling with the clear skies, very dry air. You have all three ingredients and the uh, the clear skies, dry air and light wind. Pardon me. <laughs> couldn't get all three in there and uh, we'll drop down a couple of more degrees thanks to again that radiational cooling and then it's going to warm up quickly this morning once that sun comes up because the dry air warms up very quickly does not hold the heat in 68 at noon and then 78 high temperature today so we are once again going to be below normal on average around the area five degrees dry air a little bit of a breeze out there however so if you're in the shade it's going to be kind of nippy this afternoon we are going to have dry air tomorrow as well wednesday Humidity tries to come back in Thursday, but we'll have a front move through here. Now, this is not going to be a big cold front. It'll knock some of the humidity out, but it's actually going to be warming up in behind that. Quick look at the country. There is not a lot going on. It got this huge low off there. You can see that counterclockwise rotation. This is what actually helped to pull in the cooler air for us. But I mean, otherwise, there's just nothing and nothing out there upstream for us over the next uh, five, seven days. So therefore, we're going to see plenty of sunshine around here. We are going to be chilly again tomorrow, 54 on Wednesday, getting up to 81. So the first half of the week, fall like temperatures, and then summer comes back in here. So we will have that front move through Thursday. All you'll notice is a little bit of a wind shift, and, and it will drop some of the humidity down. But despite that, we are still going to be getting up to 90 Friday, Saturday, close to it on Sunday as well. Humidity is not be, going to be outrageous, but still it's going to not going to be 78. It's not going to be this again. past weekend. No, yeah. it won't be like that. But a nice weekend. Unfortunately, no rain for the next seven days. Maybe in the middle of next week. Gotcha. Well, we'll prepare for that. Thank mm. you, Mike. 553, 51 degrees. We are winning lotto numbers. Pick three, five, zero, zero, fireball five. Daily four, nine, four, one, nine, fireball six. Cash five numbers, nine, 11, 12, 20, 21. Lotto, Texas, two, 14, 30, 35, 47, 54. And Powerball, 14, 16, 42, 48, 64. Powerball, 14, power play two. Powerball's up to $34 million for tonight's strong. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on a Monday on GMA, our team is live in the Middle East this morning, tracking the latest developments as the region braces for possible ground invasion by Israel into Gaza. Top national security official John Kirby will join us live. Also this morning, the chaos on Capitol Hill and what comes next. Plus, I'm here at Walt Disney World and we are celebrating 100 years of Disney, all that magic and making some of our own. We're working with Make-A-Wish and hopefully bring you a little bright sunshine on your Monday. On GMA. We're halfway through October and one day closer to the Dia de los Muertos Festival. This year's celebration happening October 28th and 29th at Hemisphere Park. To get tickets and learn all about the events, just scan the QR code on your screen. Right now, we're just about two minutes from the top of the hour, 51 degrees, taking a look at the roads with Transguide. And here's our big traffic trouble spot this morning, 35 at Fisher Road. Cannot catch a break this morning. Slow going, the cones are out. We'll get an update from RJ coming up at the top of the hour.
This morning on GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating an apparent drive by shooting on the city's east side near a school. What well, police are saying about the man who was shot. Plus, as airstrikes intensify between Israel and Hamas, a scramble to evacuate the war zone. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with what's being done to help civilians escape, including Americans. And looking out there with live cam this Monday morning, it is crisp and cool. Rise and shine and grab a jacket for sure. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is October 16th. And some of you are going to walk out the door this morning and go, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice change. Uh, dust off your jacket. If you didn't, you know, this weekend already, you will probably need it today. Fall is here, y'all. And uh, Mike Ostrange is too. Welcome uh, to you this morning. Good to have you Thank you. Back. It is, yeah, welcome fall. I mean, this yeah. is just fantastic. It was yeah. beautiful over the weekend. And yesterday, if you were in the shadows in the afternoon without breeze, it was Kind of, dare I say, a little bit on the, the nippy side. That's going to be the situation again this afternoon with a bit of a breeze out there. Clear skies right now. Obviously, we're not seeing anything as far as the uh, sun coming up because it's going to be another hour and 40 minutes approximately. But there's a lot of stars out there this morning because we've got some bone dry air in place, not only here at the surface, but also upstairs in the atmosphere. So you can see a lot of those beautiful stars and even a couple of uh, planets look off to the east just above the horizon. Brightest uh, star, if you will, out there is the planet Venus. 51 here in town, 40 Comfort, 45 Kerrville, 49 over in Hondo, and then feels like 41 in Kerrville right now when you factor in, yep, the wind chill because we've got a little bit of a breeze out there right now. Six miles out there at Port S.A. and uh, seven at the airport. Of course, wind chill formulas don't come in to, to really play when you're above 50, but, you know, a little bit of a breeze, 51 degrees at the airport. Feels cooler than that. No pollen count. That's going to be coming back tomorrow. And throughout the rest of today, we are going to be dropping down a couple of more degrees, touch the upper 40s before it's all said and done, and then warm up quickly. The dry air heats up fairly quickly, 68 at noon, and we will gain 30 degrees from the low to the high later on this afternoon, getting up to 78, slightly below normal. Like I said, it is going to be on the breezy side, but just a sensational day. More in store for the next couple of days. Looks wise great all the way in through the weekend. Temperatures, a little different story. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike. Yeah, good morning to everyone out there. Good Monday morning. Now, uh, we've been following this. Uh, I'm going to call this road construction because I haven't seen anything on TxDOT's traffic page. And even all last week, we had a lot of construction taking place here in the southwest side in the Vaughn Army area. This is the northbound lanes of 35 at Fisher Road. And as you could see, I mean, from the last time we checked, in with this about 15 minutes ago. Traffic has definitely built up here in the northbound lanes of 35. You see some flashing lights up there again. I know there's a lot of construction taking place in this area. This is usually all cleared out by six o'clock. So I'll check in with TransGuide, see if uh, you get a little bit more information on what exactly is going on there. You can see the traffic being delayed right now. Uh, so up to right now, it's hitting Fisher Road, but it can reach a neighborhood. And then also um, Benton City Road is another one of those exits that uh, this could back up to. You see traffic being affected all the way up to Southwest Loop 410. All right, rest of the city, things looking pretty good so far. If you need to head out right now, this might be a good time to make your way out if you need to head into the city of San Antonio. One other thing that we are following right now is that uh, let's get this camera back there in the far northwest side. You can see that uh, we do have a stalled vehicle there on the uh, on the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. So just something to keep in mind. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for suspects in two different cars who started shooting at a man on the city's east side. This happened just before midnight in the 600 block of Lincolnshire Drive. That's not far from Gates Elementary School. Now, police tell us that the man was standing next to his car when people driving two dark colored vehicles started shooting at him from about five houses away. The man was hit in the stomach and the leg. He was taken to a hospital. So far, police have not released any information about those suspects. Now to the latest on the war in the Middle East. Here's a live look at Jerusalem this morning. As the fighting continues in that region, a new agreement will allow civilians to safely escape through Gaza's southern border today. The deal comes as Americans scramble for seats on emergency flights out of the Middle East. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, Israeli troops are also preparing for a potential ground incursion into Gaza. Overnight in Gaza, more explosions. 
Israeli defense forces burnishing airstrikes around the clock, targeting the Islamist militant group Hamas. We will strike Hamas from the top, through its institutions, all the way down to the individuals that conducted the butchery of our babies. On the ground, the Israeli military calling up some 360,000 reservists with a ground incursion into Gaza appearing imminent. Inside the Palestinian territory, hospitals are struggling to wait the injured. Access to food, water and electricity cut off for days. Things are getting worse day by day, minute by minute, actually. The IDF now ordering more than one million people to evacuate northern Gaza, where Hamas's tunnel network allows them to hide out, hold hostages and smuggle weapons. President Biden on 60 Minutes calling Hamas cowards and defending Israel's response. Israel is going after a group of people who engage in barbarism that is as consequential as the Holocaust. But Biden also cautioning Israel against occupying Gaza, which Hamas has led since 2007. The U.S. now dispatching a second U.S. aircraft carrier to the region in an effort to contain the conflict. Meantime, Americans rushing to escape the war zone. We definitely feared for our lives, so for our children. We had to hold them quiet. The U.S. State Department is racing to charter four flights a day from Israel in hopes of evacuating 800 U.S. citizens daily. The State Department also expecting Americans will be among those evacuating Gaza via the Rafah crossing into Egypt. It's only set to open for a limited time thanks to a deal brokered between the U.N., Egypt, Israel and the U.S. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer headlines, Apple expected to unveil its latest iPads this week. The iPad Air, Mini and Base model will reportedly be upgraded with newer uh, generation silicon chips. And the mini iPad may feature a new display controller, but no significant design changes are expected. And Google Camera is no longer available in the Google Store. The app has a new name. It is known as Pixel Camera. The change helps the company link the app to its Pixel smartphones. The latest version of the app only works on Android 14 or above. Right now at KSAT.com, San Antonio Startup Week starts today. Local entrepreneurs have a chance to network in person and learn from industry experts during several days of panels, workshops, and city building events. This year's event will be at different downtown locations, including Geekdom, the Rand Building, and Frost Tower between now and Saturday, October 21st. Also on KSAT.com, Christina Olivares with the Social Butterfly Gal joined the KSAT Money Q&A to discuss how entrepreneurs and business professionals can harness the power of community building for success. She tells us where you can find your community, how to give your audience what they want to see. It gives us a sneak peek of her San Antonio Startup Week panel, the key elements that power community-led growth. Now that full interview is available right now on our website at KSAT.com. Switching Football over to... Coverage brought to you I forgot about that. Yeah, you guys can run that. That's paying the bills. Uh, switching over to sports as we get ready to hit the gridiron. The Cowboys will take on the Chargers in L.A. on Monday Night Football right here on KSAT 12 tonight. They're hoping to erase an embarrassing loss to the Niners. This will also be a reunion between the Cowboys and their former quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. Remember him? And Dak Prescott was asked what the reunion means to him. So for me to come up under him and then what, be in the quarterback room with him the next year before him taking over to, to being a quarterback coach, fast track to an OC, which he's been phenomenal at. Uh, a guy that sees the game is very, very innovative, uh, is going to try things. Um, and yeah, he's, he's been huge, huge to my career. And I know that, that he's going to have a lot of success out there in, uh, in LA or wherever's next for him. And i um, got a great quarterback on his hands there. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's more than a coach. So it's Cowboys Chargers, Monday Night Football. Our sports team is in Cali for tonight's game, so keep it right here for live reports this evening at 5 and 6, and then watch the game at 7.15 right here on KSAT 12. Time now, 6.09 and 50 degrees for now. And here's a look at what's coming up next. Being in the foster care system, it felt like an uphill battle my whole childhood. Countless young people face challenges in foster care. Up next, what one nonprofit is doing to make a difference. You'll need a jacket this morning down to 50 degrees. Boy, this is nice. But Mike says we are due for a significant warm up in the afternoons as we head through the week. We'll talk to him about that 
and then check in with this morning's traffic expert, RJ Marquez. That's coming up right here live on KSAT 12.